Lynn here from SassyTownHouseLiving.com and today I'm super excited to be able to share with you a Skype interview that I did with um, an incredible author. Her name is Anne-Marie Sabbath and I wanted to share with you her new release. She has a new book out and um, I read it two times. It's pretty incredible. It's called Everybody Has a Book Inside of Them, How to Bring It Out. And after I read this book, I was so inspired that I actually started writing a book myself. It really got me motivated and I want to be able to share all of the key um, features of her book. And I have a Skype interview with her that I'm going to share with you, as I said. So I apologize, some of the quality is not the greatest, but it's the content and what she says that's most important. Let me just give you a little bit of background about Anne Marie. Anne Marie Sabbath is the founder of At Ease Inc. and that is a 32 year old New York based um, business. It's a consulting firm that she started and she has given more than 200,000 individuals representing Fortune 500 companies across the globe that added polish to help them build their organization's profits. Sabbath's books and training concepts have been recognized by the Wall Street Journal, CNBC, CNN, USA Today in 2020. Anne-Marie recently wrote this book, Everybody Has a Book Inside of Them and How to Bring It Out, and she's joining us today to be able to discuss it. And I also wanted to show you another book that she wrote and it's what self-made millionaires do that most people don't. This is another excellent read and I highly recommend it to you. We are going to be speaking with her again uh, very soon and we're going to discuss a lot of the content from this book, a lot of the key areas of this book. So that was just a brief intro and now welcome to our Skype interview and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited to be able to interview you. Today we have with us Anne-Marie Sabbath. She is an author of a new and exciting book and it's called Everybody Has a Book Inside of Them and How to Bring It Out. She also has been the author of what, 10 books now, Anne-Marie? Yes. And you're working on your 11th, am I correct? The 11th is coming out next year. However, I'm not going to get pregnant with a book until autumn. <laughs> Great. So you, your books and training concepts have been recognized by Wall Street, Wall Street Journal, uh, CNBC, CNN, USA Today in 2020. Now, anything else you want to add to that, Anne-Marie, or did I pretty much cover it? You covered it. And again, everybody has a book inside of them. I can't wait to tell people how to bring it out. I know. I have to say first that I absolutely loved your book. Thank I you. plan on reading it for the second time Thank because you. in order to really absorb everything, you need to read it a few times. Absolutely. There's so much great information in there. I mean, it's jam-packed with everything. I mean, even a seasoned author, I would imagine, would benefit from reading your book. Am I correct in saying that? Absolutely. And the reason is I see, I reflect on what works as I begin writing my books because you have to go back to the zone and that's what it's about. Right. So, um, essentially, this is your ninth book now. The, this is my 10th book coming out. Yes. Here. Everybody has a book inside of them is the 10th book. But that's your 10th book. Okay. Yes. So you essentially have 11 books coming out. I mean, that you're planning for. You have another book. I think you said in 2020, that book, you're hoping, yes. right? Yes. Oh, definitely. It will happen. Okay. Capital W. So what was your inspiration? Let's just let our, our listeners know. What was your inspiration for writing this book? If you could just give us uh, a quick summary of what your inspiration was for this book. Thank you, Carolyn. My, I love helping people. I've always loved telling people what to do. <laughs> and I've always loved helping people. That's the bottom line. And as you saw in the introduction, I did more than 40, 50 book signings with my dog, Mozart, <laughs> the Maltese, from May of 2018 through December. And 
I was kind of embarrassed when they'd say, tell me about your book. And I said, well, this is my ninth book, the What Self Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't. And they looked at me like I was somebody special. And I said, what is the book in you? And they'd say, some would say, I'd always, I've always wanted to write a book or I won't, don't know where to start. And I, I've said literally 150 times throughout those six months, everybody has a book inside of them. And I got, finally got to the point where I felt like I got impregnated. I'm not kidding you. At my age, I would be in the Guinness book, World Book of Records if I got pregnant. And I thought, for goodness sake, so by beginning of December, I said, I have to write this book. It was literally ready to burst out. Everybody has a book inside of them, and I have to tell them how to bring it out. Because when I would tell them things that I thought was a no-brainer, they said, really? How? Where? And I thought, you know what? The only thing better than writing nine books is sharing with people how to write their own book. And so that's how it happened. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, I know you mentioned your dog, Mozart, and how he helped you sell so many of your books. We have a lot of dog lovers, so <laughs> that's always a cute little tale. Now, I wanted to ask you, uh, but like before the advent of the Internet, writing was really reserved for professionals or folks with an inclination or natural ability for writing, right? So can you explain to us why you think everyone should or can be a writer? And speak to us about the consequences of this surge in book writing, because as you know, everybody is writing a book, whether they're you know good or bad or indifferent. Do you think that this has good or, or negative consequences? Well, with the internet, it proves, first of all, we're all connected. The best way to market is online. Mm -hmm. Email will eventually go by the wayside. Social media has only just begun. YouTube, everything you do, podcasts. Mm -hmm. And so the key is this. Everybody has a story to tell. We've all had experiences that we can share with others to help them along the road less traveled. And so that's the bottom line. People ask, how do I bring a book out? And I say, well, tell me your story. And what I say to people is pretend you are on a 15-hour flight with somebody and you struck up a conversation and the person says, tell me your story. What is it that comes out? I do this with my Uber drivers all the time. When I tell you I've had some crying, I've cried, I've hugged, I'm in touch with more of my people uh, who are Uber drivers who I didn't know from Adam to begin with because I say to them, tell me your story. And they have a story to tell like everyone else. So it's sort of like an elevator script. What is your story? Let me go ahead and show you firsthand. Carol Ann, what is your story? <laughs> that is so true. It's such a provocative question, too, because everybody does have a story, uh, whether it's something personal in their lives or something they want to teach other people. So that's really great that, that um, you know, that you can ask people that question and it sparks like all of this emotion in them, too. It really Wonderful. does. And yeah. sometimes I have heard, uh, when I ask, what is the book inside of you? People will say, I don't know. And I say to them, it's not the answer. It's the question. Right. Whether it's next month, next year, five years, 10 years, 20 years. Ask yourself. And when the answer comes out, you will know. And when it comes back to you, when it returns to you several times, you will know. Now, the question is, when someone, I'm working with a, I won't mention a divulger because they'll have to go online to Amazon.com to be able to see the front cover of the book. I'm working with a former NFL football player. <gasps> oh, the nicest guy in the world, wonderful spouse, the best dad. I love him. I'm ready to adopt him as my son because I'm not even a football fan, and I love him because of who he is inside. And I say that to you because the key is, well, how do you start writing? The first assignment I gave him, I give any of my budding authors with whom I 
work on a coaching basis Mm -hmm. is I say to them, I find out there, I listen to them, and then I send them the book that I heard in them based on what they said, and then I say to them, your first assignment, take 30 days to think. You're not allowed to write. Think. Go about your business. Have pads of paper in the bathroom, in the dining room, on your nightstand, in the car, everywhere, and and simply jot notes. That's step one. I want you to think. When you do that, by the 31st day, I'm not kidding you, you will be so revved Mm. that you will not be able to take your fingers from the keyboard. It's like taking your favorite food and putting it on a counter, and every time you pass it, you salivate. I tell you, it works. It's reverse psychology, and it's a perfect way for getting started and for avoiding writer's block. I also tell budding authors that you, you must write every day. It can, it can be a minimum of an hour. However, no interruptions. It can be from 4 a.m. to 5 a.m., don't give me the excuse you have kids. Look, been there, done that. Right. That's how it is. Don't tell me that you work 80-hour weeks. Mm-hmm. You know what? Multiply the number of hours in those, in those uh, weeks, seven-day weeks. You have that time. Take your highest energy and you schedule an appointment with yourself. And only write for an hour. When it's 50, 50 minutes, stop. It's like being with a friend, your writing voice, and you don't want to overextend your visit with that writing voice right. get revved for the next time whether the next time is reviewing what you wrote writing what you wrote sending it to your sounding board advisor which is what we talk about you need a coach and i act as budding authors coaches however what happens is they have to have a coach so that someone says i love what you wrote or you know what why don't you add a to what you wrote. You want a coach along the way. Now, one of the things that really impressed me is I read in your book, you you put yourself out there to your readers and you say, if you have any questions, here's my email address. Like, who does that? Honestly, it, I've never read, I, I've never read a book where somebody is so willing to help other people that thank they're you. putting their email. I mean, I have to commend you for that. That really stood out to me. Um, And what do folks do when they don't have a sounding advisory board? Like, what can they do? What if, you know, there's not, they don't have a big family or they don't have a lot of friends, but they really want to write a book. What do you recommend for somebody that doesn't have folks to reach out to? Well, first of all, you don't tell everybody. You only tell two people that you're writing a book. Mm -hmm. You don't talk the walk, you walk the talk. Uh, I tell you, a max of three people. Let me give you an example. mm -hmm. When I began writing, everybody has a book inside of them. I had doubts. Even though I've written nine books, I still had doubts. Sure. And so my sounding board advisors happened to be two people who were budding authors. And I thought, I need people who would read this book. I need them to tell me as I'm writing each section, is this something that would benefit a budding reader? I also had my partner, Alan, be a budding, my budding uh, sounding, my sounding board advisor because I wanted him to know what I was doing when I would disappear for hours at a time, going to the attic to write. So this was big. And I would learn from each one of them. I would learn sometimes a compliment. I eventually had to get them to critique. I said, don't be so nice. Tell right. Me. Right. So the key is. You have to find someone who you trust, who you respect, who's not going to patronize you. Who you They don't have to be writers. They have to be somebody who would benefit from ABC. So let's say you're writing a book on the art of caretaking. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Then you find someone who is a caretaker. And you say, I'm writing this book. Would you be my sounding board advisor? People would love that. And all you're asking a sounding board advisor is to get back to you with their feedback via email. You don't have to call. Just email each other. It's more efficient within 48 hours. And as they are reviewing it, giving thought to it, you are moving on to the next section. So by the end of your book, you have had your sections reviewed. 
You might go back in the middle of the night and say, mm, I wonder if I should add ABC. Or you create a new section with DEF. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you're in process. It's running a race at your pace. You have to do an hour a day like exercising. You have to. I have to have my coffee every day. I have to write one hour a day. And people say, really? I say, sure. You email, you text one hour a day. Right. So minimize that. And I tell you, you can write a 180-page book. We'll take that as an example. If you write one hour a day. Mm -hmm. for 32 weeks. The average person writes approximately 400 words an hour. I'm saying, let's pretend you only write 200 words an hour. You still have a 180-page book finished. 45,000 words, and you don't count words when you write, 45,000 words in 32 weeks. Now, come on. Give me a break. The thing is, is everybody has a story. And what we do is, the reason I want this book to be read by so many people is I want them to gain the confidence that everybody has experienced things that they can share with others. Everybody is an expert based on their own experiences. If you even write to share it as a legacy with your family, who's going to know you or me, Carol Ann, in five generations? That's well, right. Well, they will when you have a document. Right. I love it. You know what I wanted to ask you? We have a lot of uh, listeners that are bloggers including myself. You know, we're always blogging, writing. And one of the big things that started to take off a few years ago was giving away um, their books. So so what they would do is, is in their newsletter pop-up, they would say, sign up for our newsletter and here's a free book, whatever it is, a how-to guide, mm -hmm. recipes, mm -hmm. whatever it is. What do you think of authors? Because they are, they're writing books, they're turning them into PDFs, and they're giving them away. What do you think of that whole trend? Do you have any opinion on that at all? Well, my belief is this. Why buy a cow if you can get milk for free? <laughs> That's number one. So true. All right. Now, what happens is this. I am such a giver. I would really give the shirt off my back because I love helping people. However, there is value. You have to place value on what you have. So, of course... I send out regular tips. It's not the whole book. And like we're doing, I'm giving information that I know works. So you get a bit and a piece and a bit and a piece. The question is, it's like going to a grocery store. Are you right. going to get a taste of the cheese or are you going to get the whole piece? That's such a great analogy. So why give away the entirety of something when you can just do teasers and... Well, you do it, yes, and you give content. My goal is to give people content, and if it is striking a nerve based on where they are, based on where they know a family member or friend is, then they're not going to buy a book. They're going to invest in a copy of Everybody Has a Book Inside of ah, Them. What a great way to state that. Thank you. And the key is, I'm not sure when this podcast, when this uh, interview is coming out, However, if it comes out before June 13th, which is the date of the book release, if they order it before June 13th, they, it's $13.05. Are you kidding me? Are you right. really kidding me? I'm embarrassed at how little it is as pre, a pre-order. They can actually schedule a free 30-minute consultation with me. Oh, and by doing that. Wow. Well, I really want to help people. This is bottom line because I know what the universe has given me. Anything I ask for, I get by helping others. Now, after June 13th, after June 12th, June 13th, it's on. And guess what? They will pay for the consultation, for coaching, for all of the things. Great. After they read it, before they read it, whatever they want. That's the key. And they can invest in a copy of the book for very little, $16 something. Sure. It's very, sure. The key is, you know what? You can lead a horse to water. Can you make them drink? I can hand right. them the book. Right. So why would somebody want to uh, invest in helping people bring a book out in them when they can buy the book and they can do it themselves? What is right. what would you say, Carol Ann? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I, I, I'm really just still surprised by your generosity in terms of surrendering your time because you're such a busy person and yet you're still willing 
to, you know, give your time and help folks too. Um, of that's course. commendable. It's commendable. Thank you. Now, you, obviously, you found your writing voice years ago. Uh, when did you publish your, your first book? Well, all right. Thank you for asking. I published my first book in 1992, and I had to find a publisher. So the key is today you don't have to find a publisher. That's in the next book, how mm. to publish a book and sell it as though your life depends on it. Mm -hmm. However, the good news is people don't have to wait for a publisher, a traditional publisher. They can self-publish. And let me tell you, <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same thing because you have to learn how to market. You have to learn to do this. And However, why discuss how to raise a child when you haven't even conceived the child? Mm. Enjoy the conception process. Oh, that's another the key. good analogy. <laughs> well, now, that's how it goes. Do you think you reach as many people by self-publishing? I mean, that's a whole other topic, but well, can you, you can reach just as many folks as you can by self-publishing, correct? Are you kidding me? Guess what? It's like having a child. A book is a child. The key yeah. is, the question is, how are you at reaching people? The publisher is giving you the tool by actually taking it to press. Right. You're the one who has to market it. It's like asking, is my teacher, is, are, is my children's teacher going to raise my child? No. You're going to raise your child. That's through your social media. That's through email. That's through getting words out. Let me tell you something. Every single day. I've already done four today and it's 10 a.m. Every single day I give 10 of my cards out and they happen to have the front of my last two books. And the key is that's how we do sales. I go to my dry cleaner. I go to the grocery store. I yes. go to the restaurant. I go everywhere. So, so you're I constantly go to the marketing. Constantly. Constant. Are you kidding me? This is my child, and I have something to share with people that will help them. It's not about me. It's about what I can do for them. And so the key is, you know, you ask, why am I generous with my time? Here's my question. Why not? Mm. Love it. Love it. Thank so you. we were we started talking about um, folks finding their voice. And you, yes. found, you said when, in your book that you didn't really discover your writing voice until down the road right until you were like well into your what fourth or fifth book yes should that be something that new authors should be concerned about because um i think a lot of folks are worried about the editing that they write something and then they have to constantly be editing and then they're they're they find themselves rewriting and rewriting and then they give up i mean i I've spoken to a few of my friends that have mm -hmm. done that. They go, oh, it's just terrible. This sucks. And, you know, and then they walk away from it. What do you have to tell us about someone like that that would just feel they're not discovering their voice? Sure. Well, first of all, we help people discover their voice. I realized that I didn't know my writing voice for the first several books, and I hated, hated writing those books. And, in fact, my children said, don't ever write another book until we go to college because you're miserable. And I was. Oh, I was so miserable. I don't mean I was nasty. I didn't beat them. They did everything. However, here's what I tell budding authors. Write like you talk. That's mm. it. I was so afraid to write. I would ask myself, why, how would I write? What am I supposed to say? Well, first of all, the way you're talking, that's how you write. The way you talk to somebody sitting next to them on a train, plane, bus. When somebody says to you, tell me, how did you ever get into meditation? How did you ever become a workout coach? How did you ever become the CEO of an organization? How did you ever climb the ladder? How did you ever be learn how to be such a good parent? You talk to people, you write like you talk. That's it. How concerned should folks be about grammar? Because you know the internet, you can go on Twitter and make a grammatical mistake and everybody, you know, is making fun of you, goofing on you, correcting you. So you 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 inspire someone to write a book. Now they have this wonderful book and they're worried about grammar. What what do you think a person should do at that point? I say get over it. That's number 1. First of all, talk like you write. That's why you have a sounding board advisor. 
What happens is you don't want to ask yourself what to write. You simply write like you're talking. So let me tell you, when I wrote this past book, this last book, everybody has a book inside of them, I knew what time I would start writing. Sometimes I would change my hour each day. However, I would get dressed. My thing is I put on an outfit as though I were meeting with someone. Ah, and I'd have my cup of coffee, pretending I was going to offer them one. And we would, I would set up, I write on an iPad. And I have two iPads. I write, use one for research, and I use one to key. And so what happens is, I pretend I'm sitting down with them. And I would say to myself, good morning. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to manage those dirty writing doubts. Let me tell you what I did. And so, do you talk like you write? Don't worry about the grammar. Write. You Just can get clean it out. that up. Get right. it out. This is the case. When you go on a date, you don't want to ask yourself, it's been so many years, how would I know? However, you don't want to be staged. You want to be yourself. This is, readers want to read about, readers want to hear your voice. And it's right there. It's inside of you. And this is why I say, I've said it before, 30 days, think think. Pretend you're meeting with a friend. If it's not natural, and ask yourself, who will be reading your book? What would they want to know? What did you want to know at that stage? That's what, this is not rocket science. And this is why I am so happy to help people bring out their books. Mm. Now, in your book, you mentioned two concepts that I loved. I think I reread it you. five times. A pantser and a plotter. Oh, yes. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, I'm out of the closet, Carol Ann, because <laughs> I have to tell you, I don't do therapy. I give headaches more than give than get them. However, I never knew it was all right to simply write. I never created an outline, ever. I hated outlines. I didn't even do well most in school. People, most people don't like that. And especially when it comes to writing, because the minute you do research on the internet, like how to write a book, they give you this in-depth, detailed outline, yes. and it seems like so much work. People don't have the time to do that. And in your book, you mentioned the majority of writers. You mentioned some great writers Thank that you. are pantser. Now, I guess pantser means what flying off the seat of your pants is that where that term came from or yes can you explain I, a little bit about plotters and pantsers thank you well a plotter is someone my daughter is a plotter my daughter has an accounting background finance background mm -hmm. everything is scheduled she is a plotter she loves outlines i my son is very creative and he he's in sales he is a pantser now when i say operate by the seat of your pants you, that's why those 30 days to think are important because you jot down ideas. Mm. And so it would be like saying you're going to put a meal together. When you decide to put a meal together, you may say, yeah, I'm going to do protein. I'm going to do salad. I'm mm -hmm. going to do dessert. I'm going to do a starch. Instead of saying, I'm going to start, oh, I'll do appetizers too. And then you ask yourself, well, you know what? I'm going to figure out what's going to work first. It would be like, putting, sewing, a, an out, sewing a, uh, let's say, a suit. Well, you, instead of saying, I'm going to lay this out and start this, you may say, you know what, I'm going to cut all the pieces out, and I'm going to sew the sleeve first, and then I'm going to do the collar, and then I'm going to do the front, and then I may even do the trousers. A, an, a, a plotter or a person who does an outline would go crazy. However, so what? That's not for them. It's for you. By doing that, you put everything together at the end. And the key is that's who you are. That's how it works. And I tell you, that's how it worked for me. And Stephen King does that. I know. When I read that, I couldn't believe it. You would never think that. I've read so many of his books. You would never think that. Exactly. And let me tell you, this is what gave me the confidence. Lee Child the person who has the uh, Jack Creech novels for 20 years, what he has done and still does on September 1, see he has a beginning date, important, he begins writing without an outline. Wow. And I shared with readers where they can see this for a fact. 
Yes. And besides Stephen King, Lee Child, who's written more than 20 books with Jack Creature as the constant in each of his books, in his thrillers, in his crime books, mm -hmm. does not outline. He is not a plotter. He begins each one of his books on September 1st. That's his constant. He begins writing, and within the first paragraph, Lee Child knows if he has a book ready to come out. Within the first paragraph. Paragraph. They can listen to npr.org mm -hmm. forward slash Lee Child. They will hear it. I was so mesmerized by it that I realized that this is how it works. Now, the key is everybody, Nora Roberts, people know Nora Roberts. She is a pantser. She flows and her writing flow allows her to keep going. So the key is when you write, write like you talk. Did we know exactly what we were going to say, which words we were going to use as we were doing this interview, Carol Ann? Oh, that's such a good point. That's such a good point. Yeah, I, I thought that those two concepts were very important for folks because, again, people don't want – they have busy lives. They don't want to be bogged down with rules and outlines. and So knowing that you can just write as you speak, and then what do you say – can they write as they speak and then when they're done, go back and reorganize everything? Is that recommended or do you frown upon like going back and kind of like starting over in a sense and reorganizing your thoughts and what, 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 what's sure. your advice as far as like checking your work? Well, here's the case. I can tell you what works for me. People, there are some people who love to outline, and so you should do that. That works for you. It's like going on a trip. If you're going on a trip, some people want to know within uh, every hour what they're going to be doing. Yes. That's a platter. There are also pantsers. A pantser knows that there's a beginning date, and that's when he or she is going to start the book. A pantser knows the end date that the book will be finished. Mm. A pantser says... By taking time, those 30 days to think, here are areas, here are topics that I want to include in my book. I have no clue which order. However, this is what I want to make sure I include. Those 30 days are essential. A very loosey-goosey roadmap. So what happens is going on this book writing trip, you know what? You know you're going to pass through Nebraska. Mm. You don't know if you're going to Boys Town until you get there. And then when you get there, you don't know how long you're going to be. You simply go. Go, right. You right. know you're in the direction of the end date. Now, when it's all said and done, this is telling your story about your trip, your trip of life, your trip of success, your trip of failure, and how you turned it into a success. You stay focused with the end. And one of the things that's extremely important during scheduling an hour to write mm -hmm. is at the end to make sure that you know the next topic that you will be writing. So you say, gosh, I think tomorrow I may want to write about how other people have done it and look for people and quote them based on how they have turned a failure into a success. Find that and then quote them and then you go into the whole thing about so getting a what, release. what the person's doing essentially in that 30 days is creating like an informal outline for their book and it's giving them time to really reflect and think about what they want to write about, which direction they want to go in. Now, how many hours a day should they be uh, thinking about this during the outline phase? An hour a day, two hours a day? Like, what do you recommend? There's no special time. Those 30 days are yours. I believe, because I'm a pantser, that I free flow. So sometimes I stay in the shower five or ten more minutes. Sometimes I go to bed, I'm ready to melt into the pillow. I have the most brilliant ideas. Mm -hmm. So I have to jump out of bed and write them down. Right. I I swim. I'm far from uh, a great swimmer, but I swim. 
And when I swim, it's a big problem because I get so many ideas that I have to get out and write them down. Oh, that's funny. It's pathetic. And because I'm alone, I can hear myself think. So what I am saying is during those 30 days, it's not a matter of how much time, however, you have to schedule time to think. To do it, yeah. yeah. You write your, you think, simply think. You know, I, you think when you're walking alone. You have to schedule so no pressure. appointments. No pressure. There's no pressure. Take time to think. That's why 30 days. Think about it. What story do you have to tell? And I'll tell you another thing. People know. I love helping people bring their books out. It's, it's such an exciting thing. People say, I don't know what my book would be. And I ask them, when was the last time you walked into a bookstore? Eh, you know, two years ago. We do Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Indie. I say, fine. Do you remember the last time? Let's say you have an hour to kill. You walk into a bookstore. Where is it that you go? What section? Mm. I've heard so many people say things. That's I go to children's point. books. I go to history. I go to juicy romances. Mm. I go for years. Ever since I can remember going into a bookstore, I have always gone to self-help, inspiration, motivation. I'm a rah rah bippa da person. I get so psyched. It's pathetic. That's the and first so, place I go to, right to the self-help and inspiration section. Well, see, this is why you're doing what you do, because you love helping people. Yes, this is it. Absolutely. This is what we have in common. This is an, and this is how you know. And remember, when people say, I have to think about it, well, good. They're on Pacific Standard Time. They have to think about it. And I say, it's, again, it's not the answer. It's the question. So, so well said. Now, Thank you. One of the reasons I, I loved your book, and I've read other books about you. how to write. I've read articles online. No book I've ever read or article really maps out brilliantly what a person needs to do. But it's not like pressure. It's just like, hey, this is a roadmap to take you where you want to go. And it's, it's so jam-packed with great things like, for instance... The Writing Pledge of Allegiance. I absolutely <laughs> love that. So you have, what, 10 bullet points for writers to ask themselves and reflect upon. Now, somebody buys your book. They really want to start writing. Do you recommend that they, like, take that pledge first before they do the 30 days? Or doesn't it matter? Oh, no. I don't want them to take that pledge. What they do is they... Look at the book. They start reading. Maybe they take 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. They have to decide they're committed. So maybe they say, I'm not going to write until January 1, 2020. Mm. It doesn't matter. It's not the answer. It's a question. So they read it. Read it for the fun of it. Read it to enjoy it. Read it and then set it aside and think. That's ah. it. That's all you have to do. Now, I want to give, if I may, I want to give your listeners some recommendations. Mm. What I did, and it was so much fun, I had a grab and go bag every single day. I had a bag I have, oh, it's this little bag I've had for years, and I keep in it a little chocolate. Well, I don't mean a little, probably a bar or two, <laughs> okay, because I have to get myself psyched. I sure. keep in uh, Kleenex. I keep in my pens. I keep in my all my tech tools, except the iPad. I'm using, and then I'll take the other one and keep it in my grab-and-go bag, a bottle of water. I keep in everything, so if I decide I'm going to go down the hall to schedule that hour to write, my grab-and-go bag is there. I don't have to think about it. If I decide to go to the attic, I'm going to do it. If I decide, if we're out, let's say we're on vacation, I decide to go to the pool and write in the cabana, I have my grab-and-go bag with me. Everything you need. Exactly. That's essential. I will tell you something else that your readers may say is so silly, and boy, does it work. You want to find the direction in which you are sitting that will allow your energy to flow. I know. When I read that, I just couldn't believe it. Now, most people choose a southern direction. Can you just talk about that a little bit and why it's so important? Well, the key is the direction is really based on the person. And I had no clue that I, I personally always sit south. And I didn't know that. And one of the things I ask 
people when they are my budding authors is I ask them, when you're sitting at the kitchen table, do you sit in a specific seat to eat? I say, yes, we all have our seat. And I yeah. said, well, when you write bills, when you're online working, do you sit in that seat or another chair? Nine times out of 10, the person sits in the other chair, not the one that they are using to eat. And I ask them, what direction is it? And nine times out of 10, it might not be south. It's whatever they want, whatever works for them. That's the direction where their energy flows. So right now, as you are looking at me, the question is, what is the direction? As we were getting set up for this interview, you know what we did. I had to scoot here, and I had to scoot there, and I had to scoot here. Yes. Well, guess what? It just may be south. I can't tell you for sure. However, this is how it works. So the key is you want to have quiet. You want to put your earbuds in so that you can hear your inner writing voice. You want to sit in a direction, and you'll know the direction. You'll do it without thinking about it. However, if you know it's south or if you know it's north, then when you go to a coffee shop, you automatically are going to migrate toward a seat that is most likely in that direction. And, and it's so much fun, too, because um, it's part of the writing journey. You can put like an app, a compass app on your phone yes. and just see where, you know, choose a spot and then see what direction it's facing. I love that. That's so much fun. I'm totally going to be doing that. Love that. Thank you. Make sure you do. And, you know, this is one of the reasons I had such a hard time writing my first several books because I didn't know this. And I would, oh my golly, I would struggle. And I didn't even think about, I had to sit in a certain direction. And so I did, it happened. And so I want to share with people what I've done so that they don't have to go through all this minutia. They can get down to business. However, they have to have a sounding board advisor. The only thing we have is our word. And once you tell people, I want you as my sounding board advisor, I will in turn be yours when you need coaching yes. for XYZ. And I meant That's to ask you, about. how often should you send new content to your advisors? Is it after every chapter you write, after every five paragraphs? Like, what do you recommend? Thank you for asking. I did it after every section. Mm. I could hardly wait because I almost felt guilty if I didn't have a section to send them. And so I would write a section. I would look at it. If I, if I were content with it, I'd send it. If I wasn't quite, con if I weren't content with it, I'd say, you know what, I'm going to step back. And nine times out of 10, it was every day. There were times I needed a little reprieve. And so I would step back, I would think, but 99% of the time it was daily. Now, one of my sounding board advisors happened to respond to me promptly. The other one would wait 48 hours because that was what would work best with her schedule. Ah. And that was fine. The key is it was off of my back. Right. I could move on. I needed information. I like, I'm the type of person who needs constant feedback to know, am I in the direction? That's a real important thing for me because I'm a pantser. So believe it or not, a pantser operating by the seat of your pants, coming up with the ideas, we still need direction. However, it's, not formalize. Sure. We create our formal, our formalization. Right. right. That's great. Um, do you have any other things um, that you think are very important for our listeners uh, before reading your book that they, you know, need to know or need to ask themselves or anything else you want to share? Well, thank you. What I would say would be to ask themselves, what is the road less traveled that is part of their lives. What have they done that they wish somebody else would have told them? Mm. And by doing that, to simply think, what is it that's important to you in life? By doing that, that is your story. And the key is, I, I will say, this is an important thing. Some people, in fact, a few of my authors, of the 15 authors who I are part of my army of colleagues, uh, wrote books, and they really didn't want people to know who they were. One and You woman, talk about that a lot in your book as well. Yes, and so the question is, if you have a story to tell and you don't want people to know it's you, then use a pen name. Use a sued name. By doing that, you can reveal that. You can self-publish, and then you know how to manage that, and I talk about that a little bit and guide people along the way. How do you do that? 
And so the key is get it out. Don't give me an excuse. And I guess I would tell your listeners, write down the excuses. And you know what I'm going to say? Get over it. Bad one. Give me another one. Right, doesn't right. work. You know what? When you're ready to write a book, I don't care if it's tomorrow, next week, next year, 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, everybody has a book inside of them. Right. So journaling, too, is very, very popular. People are, are taking a very, uh, you know, d different look at journaling today, and they're they're starting to heavily document their days and their experiences. So a great way to turn that into a book, say it's very personal, you can use a pen name and have it published that way, so maybe family members won't be heard or you don't want, maybe you don't want them to know that you wrote a book, right? That would be exactly. another reason. <clears throat> look at Bridges Over Madison County. That book was self-published. Self no kidding. Didn't yes. know that. Yes, and a publisher picked well, up that on it. An excellent yes. book. There's wow. not, exactly because this woman did not want to know, have her children know sure, of not. what was going on. And so the point is, this is how this is really how it works. I am telling you, it's so exciting. And when I tell you, I had a tear, and I'm not being dramatic. I no. literally had a tear falling down my cheek as I was writing the last section because I was going to miss my writing voice. We were such buddies every yeah. day for an hour. Sure. So the only way I could get over that sad feeling was I committed to myself and my writing voice that next year I would have another book come out. And I knew exactly what it was. It's how to so publish. So your inspiration for your book just flew right out of the book you just wrote. That's, it that's did. brilliant. Well, thank you. And the key is you have to stay focused. My question is, what was my message? What do readers want? And I'm not going to give them more than they can chew. I'm not mm -hmm. going to tell them, as I said, how to raise a child. I'm going to tell them how to conceive their child and the fun, what is going to happen, the movements, the actions, the feelings, the emotions, how to make it happen. And I tell you, it really does. The fun, the beautiful part of the book is 15 authors I mentioned are in the book. This is amazing. 193 books cumulatively. I know. 43 I read that. I couldn't genres. Yeah. May, may I share this? This is so important. Of course. There is an author. Her name is Gail Z as in Zebra Martin. It took her 20 years to write her first book. Between moving, marriage, children, work, the whole Magilla, sure. it took her 20 years. She wanted to write a book. Well, her friends, family kept coaching her to write it. So what she would do before she even wrote it, as she was writing it, she would go into a bookstore. M, we taught, said Martin is her last name. She would look at the books uh, in fantasy, sci-fi. Mm. She would take the L book, the last L book on the shelf, and the last, the first N is a Nancy book. She would move them apart. She would take the book or books out in between for only a few minutes. She would put her hands on that section and she would visualize that that's where her book would be someday. So that's the law of attraction in action right there. And the law of attraction in action. And she said, as readers will see in the book, the day my book was there. My first book. She said it was so awesome. That's great. That's great. So you're re the key is Gail Z. Martin would be the first to tell you. 76 books. She still has dirty writing doubts. And they will find out in the book how she manages them. This is important. Yes. Is, we, all, we all have them. So they are with such wonderful people. Uh, by reading this book, authors who have done it, and they're human beings. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. If you talk, you can write. And guess what? Even if you can't talk, you have your inner thoughts. You can write. That's such a good point. And I love the examples, the motivating examples that you give in your book of folks like the Uber driver who writes, what, four books at a time? Or he's got, like, so much going on at one time. He's constantly, like, writing in different genres, too, going on. 
And then you have your partner that you motivated <laughs> to write a book as well. You talk about that. And there's just so many great motivating. And the person who, who didn't want to write a book but wrote a book on why he didn't want to write a book, right? That was Exactly. So Exactly. And so the key is, it's, you have to have fun with this. And you made a good point, Carol Ann. People ask, is there, can I write in more than one genre? Well, actually, I didn't even know that answer. And the key is, there are different voices. It's not like people yeah. are schizoid. What it is, is they, may, they have different chapters of their lives. Right. And so the key is, what is the genre that speaks to you first? Focus. Let me tell you. You don't have to have a certain education. You don't have to be in a certain profession. I have someone who emailed me about four months ago. He wrote, read my book, What Self-Made Billionaires Do That Most People Don't, and he told me which of the 52 secrets he still had to accomplish. Well, he told me he was writing a book, and he was almost finished, and I said, oh, send it to me sometimes, sometime. I have to tell you, he sent it to me. I didn't like it. I love it. Oh. I, I mean, it is so magnificent. I thought, this is your book. I, will, I don't think I will ever write like him. He is writing. He's almost finished with his second one. Now, not having it published, he simply wanted to get it out. A facilities manager. It's so magnificent. It is for kids, 12 to 17, a max of 100 pages which is a typical, it could be anything, however, that's a good length for a children's, when I say children's book, it's not a golden book for three-year-olds. It's right. for that age that I mentioned, the 12 to 15 or 17. He is magnificent. In fact, I'm helping him now. I'm coaching him. He's writing a proposal. And I'm going to help him find a publisher. And if he doesn't, guess what? We're going to get it to be self-published. He's, I've never... I look like a peon in my writing style the way, based on how he writes. He's wow. so terrific. I can't even, I cannot even explain it. I'm really looking forward to reading your, your book about self-made millionaires. How did you, you get the inspiration for that book, too? But let's talk about that briefly. Thank you. Well, this is a big one. For more than 31 years, I have assisted more than 200,000 people in creating their own success right. by learning how to climb the ladder in their companies. Mm -hmm. Well, long and short of it all, I was in Washington, D.C. doing a program for a particular organization, had 60 people, 30 in the morning, and then we took them through lunch, etiquette, and then 30 in the afternoon. So I was getting a little bored, and I thought, oh, I have to repeat this program. So I said, let's start differently. So I said this to myself. So I began, and I asked these 30 people, several of them, how many have accomplished goals? One young lady, Susie Q, blonde, short skirt, said, I live in DuPont Circle. And I said, congratulations. <laughs> this other young man, good-looking kid, said, I have the car I've always wanted to drive, and it's a chick magnet. I said, wow, aren't you a smart one? This third young man, late 20s, who looked like a wallflower who needed miracle Grow, <laughs> lifted his head. And he said, the most understated person I've ever seen, he said, I save $1,000 a month. <gasps> oh, Ex wow. Exactly. That's exactly what everybody did. He was the star. And so I said, how? Everybody was leaning toward him. He said, well, I don't live in the fanciest part of town. I live with six other guys, and I drive the car my grandpa gave me. Not exactly a chick Look magnet. At that. And on and on and on. And he said, because I want to be a self-made millionaire. Well, I finished that program. I flew back to New York. I took about six months to think. I thought, what am I doing? I'm helping people increase their organization's bottom lines. I have to assist them in creating their own success. Mm -hmm. So I went to my publisher, and I would have self-published this in a minute. I said, boy, do I have a book for you. I found 30 people who came from nothing. Now, to find 30 people who would commit. How did you let do me tell that? You, well, it wasn't easy. Well, first of all, I went to Blue Collar Millionaire online. I found, I looked for 200 people and actually 30 people followed through, which was a good number. And so in What Self Made Millionaires That Do That Most People Don't, in this book, which has been translated to five languages, I'm so excited. Yes, that's so, so congratulations on thank that. Thank you. 
Well, I'm honored. My goal is to help other people. I mean, this is what it's about. What's happened is people are really making a difference. I mean, they really see the difference because these are 52 ways or 52 secrets. And you know what? Most people have at least 48 of the 52 accomplished. That's the key. And so this is what it's about. And one of the 52 secrets is creating multiple sources of income. You know what? I haven't made millions of dollars on book royalties. However, right. it's opened so many doors. Sure. Speaking engagements. 200 here, 300 here, 500 Absolutely. here, 2,000 here. So this is what we want to help people do. I can't wait to read that book. That's next up for me. Thank you. Anne-Marie, I enjoy this thoroughly. And I'm going to, as I said, reread your book. It's brilliant. It's, it's really a guiding Thank you. force for Thank folks you. that are even thinking about wanting to author a book themselves or secretly desire to do so. It's, I, I can highly recommend the book and I really welcome everybody to grab a copy. You will not regret it. It's brilliantly written and it's outlined perfectly. I know it sounds like too many accolades, but I'm being very honest. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, once I started reading it, I was engaged the whole way through. Thank like, you. you know when you watch a movie and you're engaged through the whole thing and then all of a sudden you look up and it's two hours later and it's over? Thank you. you don't often get that with books. And I definitely got that while reading your book. So thank you so much for sharing your time, your inspiration, your thank energy you. with our audience. And I'm sure if they have any questions... Can they reach out to you and ask you via email or post it maybe on the article where it's going to be published? Are you kidding? Good. Number one, yes. And I want to help them so much that I'm going to give my text. 513-200-0449. I want them to, they order a book. Again, are you kidding me? They can then schedule on annemariesabbath.com, a calendar appointment, Wonderful. a schedule to get a 30 minutes. And they can email me, text me at annemariesabbath.com, ask me any question. Okay. And, and I'm on LinkedIn. They can call. They te don't call, please. Text. I want to give you 1,000% of my attention. They can email me. They can go on LinkedIn. And you know what? I will help them bring out the book in them. That is so exciting. It's so Thank exciting you. for folks. And we will be in touch with you thank again. You. And um, thank you again so very much, Anne-Marie. It's been a pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you.